Hello everyone, my name is Luke Okoth from the engineering team at Davis and Shatliff and today we'll be taking you through um, our daily sun tower and how to assemble the unit um, at your site. With me here today I have engineer Amos Wambura who will be overseeing this installation and I also have my team member David Otieno who will be carrying out the assembly and installation. So step one would be to check the layout of your site ensure wherever the structure is going to be positioned should be a place where water does not drain into your site to prevent any issues uh, on the integrity of the structure. Once we've picked the position where we're going to locate our structure, we need to be ready with all the required tools that we'll need for this installation. From our jambe to our spade, you're going to need a mattock. Um, in some sites where you'd have to clear the ground first, you're going to need your machete and to mark out the holes, you're going to need some pegs and a hammer to locate them into the ground. We have our power drill with our self-stopping screws that would be used to assemble the, the sun tower structure. Eventually, once the holes are dug, we're going to have these PVC sleeves which will locate the footing, the foundation footings of our structure. Again, it's important to mention that we've selected an area where water does not drain to which will compromise the foundation of the structure. Another point that we've considered is how the sun tracks across the sky. It's also very important to ensure maximum exposure on the solar panels. Being that our site is south of the equator, it's important that the slant faces the north of the equator, again to ensure maximum solar exposure. David is uh, marking out the site that we've, uh, that we've selected. So we'll mark out um, the foundation footings, our footing from one foot to the other is uh, 1.1 meters and that is square. So we'll proceed also by taking the diagonal across each footing to make sure we have the dimensions that are correct. The PVC sleeve that is supplied with the day lift sun tower is 8 inches in diameter. So as we excavate, we ensure our hole is not only 8 inches, but we also have an allowance of 4 inches around making our hole 12 inches in diameter to allow the sleeve to be positioned inside. The sleeve is one meter long and we're going to bury it down to 700 millimeters into the ground. We'll have part of it sticking up and this is to ensure we have a strong solid base to support the sun tower even when the tank is full of water. My team has now prepared the holes and we'll proceed by measuring to confirm the depth. Again, our PVC sleeves have to go down by 700, leaving 300 at the top. A point to note as you're doing your foundation, in areas where you have black cotton soil or sandy soil, it's important that the excavation is dug wide enough and cast in place. Um, we pick up one of our holes to use that as our reference point. And that reference point will guide the rest of the foundation footings to ensure that they still correspond to the measurements that we first took and also ensure that the level is, is correct to avoid again any misalignment as our tower is coming up. We once again reconfirm the dimensions to ensure eventually when the structure comes up everything is correctly aligned and it is sitting firm. Once the footing has been put in place, as we backfill, we compact as much as possible so as to ensure that the structure stands up, erect, firm and very strong to take up the weight of the tank as it is full of water. With the foundation already done and the holes excavated and everything positioned into place, we now move on to assemble the tower. With the tower, we have the components applied as semi-knockdown kits with the leg assembly and the main bearers on the platform and the partnered leg assembly. This will be put together to now form the height of the structure which will be supported with the horizontal bracings that will run across. So here we go, each leg assembly taking its position onto the structure. So the leg assembly is being connected okay. onto the main bearers of the platform. Eventually the bolts will be tightened and the horizontal struts and the bracings will be put into place to make the whole assembly one rigid structure. Our first leg assembly is now in place. We will proceed and take the partner leg assembly 
and position it onto the main bearers once again and secure it with the balls. As you can see, the left and the right leg assembly have been positioned on the main bearers and are being secured into place. With the leg assemblies now in position, safely secured on the main bearers, we'll move on to put on the bracing struts across the structure to make it one complete rigid unit. Our inlet and outlet piping from the tank will run down across and be secured with the horizontal bracing that is being positioned into place. With our horizontal bracings already in place, we'll now proceed and secure our cross bracings onto the side, onto the sections of the tower. You will notice that, as is detailed in the drawing, as we position our cross bracings, it is important to make sure they run in a crisscross manner to evenly distribute the loads and to prevent any side or lateral movement of the tower. Also to note that um, the, the self-tapping screws that have been used to secure the cross bracings are at least three or four in number to ensure that it is very rigid onto the structure our sub assemblies have now been connected into one complete structure and as you can see we're now positioning the tower onto the foundations we will now proceed and position the tower onto our pvc foundation sleeves take note the leveling strut will come and rest onto the sleeves which have already been leveled and this will automatically ensure the whole structure sits upright and level, ready to take up the load that will come onto the top. As we were casting our foundation footings, we ensured they were level. So as you can see, the tower has now sat. The leveling bracket comes and sits onto the, onto the PVC sleeves, ensuring our structure now sits upright. Because once the load comes in, and that's the tank that is full of water, any misalignment or any misleveling will cause the structure to sink. So we have our long upright support and the short one. This tells you our solar panels will be oriented sloping this way. This is important to ensure that we have maximum exposure on the solar panels as they are on top of the tower. We'll now proceed to put up the stands that will support the solar panels and secure them with the very same brackets that we've anchored. Of importance, as you're securing the brackets that will hold the solar support frame, to first position all the bolts into place before proceeding to tighten all of them to make sure that the support stand is firm, ready to take up the solar panels. We are now putting in the, the rafters that will act as a solar support uh, platform. Note that these support members come already pre-cut and measured from the workshop and we'll now proceed to install the cross bracing on the leg assembly of the solar support structure. So the two panels on the lower row have been secured and will finish the solar panel arrangement by securing the final two on the top row of the solar support structure. Davison Shatliff provides Already branded tanks, as you can see, this 3,000 liter has predetermined dimensions to allow it to fit onto the sun tower. One can also have their own tank, but the dimensions should be able to fit to what has been specified to allow it to fit onto the sun tower. The plumbing is always done while the tank is on the ground and as it's fit into place, the inlet and outlet connections can be completed. So with the structure now upright, we're ready to lift and put the tank into place. So my team and I, uh, with the help of a few two locals, will be able to position the tank easily into position. With the tank now in place, it's important to position it at the very middle for equal load distribution throughout the support tower. With everything at the top of the structure now in place, we come to um, the foundation footings and using our soil cement mix, 
or in some cases you could also have a sand and cement mix in the ratio of one to six. We'll proceed to backfill and eventually compact. And as you can see, in cases where we have a soil and cement mix, it's important to sprinkle some water onto the mixture to ensure good compaction. As explained earlier, the extension that's provided on the daily sun tower is to, to be able to help secure the inlet and the outlet pipes with the brackets that are provided for the tank. Today, we came here to show you on how to assemble the daily sun tower structure. My colleague Luke has showed you the process of assembling a tank and bring it up. As you can see behind me, this tank is light. The tank come in three heights, 2.4 meters, 3.4 meters, and 4.4 meters. We can have different sizes of the tank, 3,000, 5,000, 6,000. It is manufactured from high tensile galvanized steel, profiles that are exceptionally strong and corrosion proof with no painting required. Within a day, a customer can have a complete system installed including the solar PV modules.